Apple Knocker Radio. Yeah. That's just got to be a, a thrilling way to live. It is. It's very magical. It's very magical. And that was part of the inspiration for writing the book, too, is I want other people to be able to connect with that and experience that for themselves through the creative process. But, you know, that can be in any manifestation. It doesn't have to be through painting or a visual art. Or We're all creative beings. Just being a human is a creative act, you know. So whether that's through art or through business or whatever it is that we choose to do, we can be creative in that and find a very magical way of life. I, I've talked to people, um, including a couple friends of mine, who feel completely closed off from any kind of creativity, and um, it actually bothers them. You know, like um, there's one person I'm thinking of in particular who has a really hard time imagining clearly, clear visual imagination or being a very creative person. And um, what would you say to people uh, of that nature? I mean, it's, it's largely what your book goes into. Um, but could you explain here a little bit in a little condensed version um, how somebody like that could go about tapping into this wellspring of inspiration? Yeah, I think, I think there's a number of ways that we can connect with that part of ourselves. And one of the main ways that I would recommend, which is very accessible to most people, is just to spend time in nature to create space and stillness within the self. Because if we're full of every, like full of ourselves, full of information, full of busyness, like there's no space for that creative spiritual energy to move through us. And so creating more space and spending time in natural environments and giving yourself time to contemplate and to, um, to just be, you know? Mm. So I think that's really fundamental. Um, but also working with dreams. I think a lot of people just sort of, they disregard dreams. They don't pay attention or they have trouble, trouble remembering them. Um, that's very common. But if we can train ourselves to get in the habit of both remembering and recording our dreams and listening to what they have to convey to us, it's a rich source of material for creativity. It can be super inspiring, you know, and create a lot of like um, mysterious uh, channels for us to explore or just reveal those channels to us. Do you have any tips for how somebody can go about remembering their dreams? Uh, first of all, set the intention that you want to and keep that intention in your mind when you go to way to record them, a pen and paper next to your bedside, or you can record them, you know, on a recording device. Um, if it's hard for you to get up and write first thing in the morning and um, getting proper sleep you know, sticking to a regular sleep schedule. There's different tricks. I think some people like to um, interrupt their, their deep sleep, their deep REM sleep, and that can be a time for remembering dreams more easily. Mm -hmm. So like setting alarms for, you know, when you would be in that sort of deep sleep, like around three or four in the morning. And then I think what would be easiest is like just turning on your recording device and recording any fragments, anything mm -hmm. that you can remember, even if it's just a, the faintest feeling. That's how it begins. You just need to record whatever you have, even if it's just a very subtle impression. And the more you do that, and the more you have that intention of wanting to remember, your unconscious will work with you. It'll communicate. And the more that you're able to write down and record, the more that you'll remember. And that's been my experience. Mm. Yeah. And I go, you know, I go through phases myself where periods where I don't dream. Um, and that's okay. You know, we can't always be plumbing the depths of the unconscious. Sometimes we just need to live our daily life. And the times when I'm dreaming a lot, it can be a little overwhelming, you know, where I'm writing down five pages of dreams and, you know, then trying to interpret them. And it's too much, you know, too much mm -hmm. time in the dream world. <laughs> so there's a balance. Well, 